Okay, all right, guys, get back in here. We're about to start. So Josh just mentioned it's my last sermon of the month. Made it. You guys made it through me. Um, today we're wrapping up the last of what I have for you guys on the on the topic that we've been going over this month, uh, the theme of sacrifice. And yeah, it's been a long month in more ways than one. Um, but it's been encouraging been encouraging this month to hear that you know what we've been going over has allowed for some good discussions in cell groups, for some good discussions in some different conversations that have been going on amongst people. So yeah, that's awesome. Remember, like we're not just supposed to come fed and then leave and then forget it all, right? We're supposed to be thinking about these things, thinking about how we can apply them to our lives and how they're challenging us to grow and all these things. So how we can measure up to, to Christ's standard. Um, in terms of the attitude and mentality of sacrifice that we've been going over. So, yeah, definitely praise God for that. And um, I guess it's sort of quite literally on that note how we'll wrap up this week. We're going to be going over a little passage in Hebrews 13 um, to just see another layer of what sacrifice means to us now uh, and the way that we offer praise to God. So... I guess first we'll just sort of do a quick overview of what, where we've been, but remember the essential act of service to God has always been sacrifice. Sacrifice is the necessary payment for sin since the fall of Adam. Sacrifice appeases God's wrath. Sacrifice restores fellowship that we talked about in the beginning of the month, um, from Abel to Noah to Abraham to Moses to all of Israel to us today as the church. And sacrifice is and always has been at the heart of worship to God. Under the New Covenant, however, we our new sacrifice is found in the work of Christ, who sacrificed in our place. In terms of works, this was the last and final sacrifice needed in order to be made right with God. Because of Christ, and we've been hitting on this throughout the month, but because of Christ, we no longer need to go through an ongoing and meticulous process like the Jews in order to be set right in God's eyes. It was perfected in Jesus. Uh, because of Christ, we're perfectly clean, right? Perfectly clean before God. And you can't make something that's fully, perfectly clean more clean. Okay? You can't take, make something that's perfectly spotless um, somehow more spotless. Okay? Christ fulfilled it in totality. And because of that, as I said last week, we turn our lives, it's a little hot, we turn our lives into a living sacrifice. He sacrificed to, uh, for us to the fullest extent. Now we are called to do the same in the way it is that we live. Um, he gave to us, and so now we give to him. And we sacrifice our desires to suit his desires. And we sacrifice our priorities and submit to his priorities. Um, as Luther said, the terrible thing, the almost impossible thing, is to hand over your whole self, all your wishes and precautions to Christ. But, as I said a couple weeks ago, it's a good deal when we measure what has been given to us. And it's not a deal, it's not a short-term deal with short-term benefits. It's a long-term deal with long-term benefits for us. And because of that, we're filled with the confident hope of those benefits. Um, I really like this, but God plays the long game for us, and so we play the same long game in everything it, it is that we do and go through. Scripture says that this is the proper mindset and attitude uh, that we should be seeking in the new covenant sacrifice that God gave us in Christ, where our fellowship with him is maintained. So, Now in Hebrews, as I said, we're given another layer to add to our understanding of this, of sacrifice, and how we could should be seeking to give back to God. So, without further ado, I was just going to read the, the passage I want to focus on, but we'll start at the beginning of Hebrews 13 and go up to the, to the point I want to focus on, which is verses 15 and 16. So, Hebrews 13. Keep on loving each other as brothers and sisters. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. Remember those in prison as if you were there yourself. Remember also those being mistreated as if you felt their pain in your own bodies. 
give honor to marriage and remain faithful to one another in marriage. God will surely judge people who are immoral and those who commit adultery. Don't love money. Be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those who follow them. We have an altar from which the priests in the tabernacle have no right to eat. Under the old system, the high priest brought the blood of animals into the holy place as a sacrifice for sin, and the bodies of the animals were burned outside the camp. So also Jesus suffered and died outside the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. So let us go out to him outside the camp and bear the disgrace he bore. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. And don't forget to do good and to share with those in need. These are the sacrifices that please God. The writer goes on to talk about obeying your spiritual leaders and praying for this, this body and yeah, it gives them the final message of, of hope and encouragement. So, yeah, 15 and 16 is where I want to focus on today, so that we'll do that. Um, a popular Christian author described how reading C.S. Lewis, sorry, Collins is double C.S. Lewis drop in the same day, I know you're not a huge fan, but um, uh, described how reading his thoughts in one of his books, it's like the reflection on Psalms is one of his books, helped him to see this aspect of our relationship with God in a different way. And so I just want to share it with you. Um, He wrote, Lewis says that as he was beginning to believe in God, a great stumbling block was the presence of demand scattered throughout the Psalms that he should praise God. He did not see the point in all this. Besides, it seemed to picture God as craving for our worship like a vain woman who wants compliments. He continues to write, but the most obvious fact about praise, whether of God or anything, strangely escaped me. I thought of it in terms of of compliment, approval, or giving honor. I had never noticed that all enjoyment spontaneously overflows into praise. The world rings with praise. Lovers praising their mistress, readers their favorite poet, walkers praising the countryside, players praising their favorite game. Excuse me. My whole more general difficulty about the praise of God depended on my absurdly denying to us, as regards the supremely valuable, what we delight to do what indeed we can't help doing about everything else we value. I think we delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. It is its appointed consummation. I really like this. I really like this. And for me, and I get that this is unique to me, and I don't expect this or put this on you guys, but for me this is one of those um, just sort of light switch moments. Like in, in my faith, you know. And it's something that falls in line with the message of changing the way you think that we've been hitting on throughout the month. But praise to God is not just a nice thing to do when we feel like it, okay, or when it's convenient. Um, the Psalms, um, this, and Lewis's book on, is, is about this, but the Psalms are, filmed, are, are filled with the command, praise the Lord, or an expression, praise the Lord. It's not a suggestion for something that Uh, we might want to do when we don't have anything better to do. It's a command, and it's supposed to permeate everything that we do. The writer of Hebrews says, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. And praise to God should be the whole, um, like, what do you call it? Tenure of our being? Tenure? Tenure of our being. Instead of feeling obligated in this way to God, and this is where it becomes the light switch moment for me. Okay? Instead of feeling obligated in this way toward our relationship to God, as if it's like some sort of annoying chore that we have to do as believers, just like own it. Own it as part of your relationship with God. Own, own this aspect of your relationship with God um, as part of your love and appreciation um, for the level of sacrifice that Christ first showed us and the, the length that God was willing to go. Own it as part of our service to him. I really like the, the word of service with our you know, ongoing theme of being in, in war. 
I think that if we're like truly wanting to live for God in everything that we do and everything that we say and everything that we act out or inter- every person that we interact with, etc., if we're truly and actively trying to fulfill our role as a living sacrifice, as I mentioned last week, this level of expression is just natural for us. It naturally plays itself out in our lives. And we will want to express it. Um, and you'll want people to know why. I appreciated the last two songs, I think it was, that we did. The song before we broke for praise and prayer. I forget the name of the song. Help me to just just to live it, Lord. Am I doing well? Help me to never seek the crown. And then the one we just sang. How did it go? Brain fart. Before the, before the doxology. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing for you. Um, yeah, I appreciate those songs falling on today. So, I just wanted to share with you guys an example of how this plays itself out in my my world and this month specifically and just be vulnerable for a second before you guys but um yeah so how do I articulate this in the most concise way (laughs) sort of what's going through my head every day leading up to these days where I'm sitting here talking in front of you guys um Okay, so whenever I'm preparing to talk to you, to to speak and to give a sermon, I'm always like super constantly throughout the week, even leading up to like when you guys are getting your snack right before the sermon. I'm like super in prayer with God that God uses me as a tool to, to give to you guys, okay? And, you know, to let me let go of like, whatever fears or anxieties or doubts I might have of what I prepared up to this point, you know, and this has been a journey for me, um, that he would just use me to speak for him and to glorify him and to give you guys, you know, something to grab onto so that you can take it out of here and apply it to your lives, okay? And like I mentioned in the beginning, when, when I hear things, encouraging things, like, that was a good sermon, or we got to use, or, you know, your sermon got brought up in this conversation, or we had a good cell group because it allowed us to boom, 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 boom. It's always really awkward for me. And some of you guys might have heard me, like, express that before. Like, the first time it happened was, like, a Christmas service a few years ago. Like, that was really good, Adam. And and that was, like, the first time I heard that, because, you know, for the year before that, I'm sort of, like, stumbling my way through it and learning how to be up here, right? Um, so when I heard that, it was, it was, it was weird to me because I'm like deeply like talking to God that He would just use me in in His way, okay? And so when I hear those things, it's awkward because I don't I don't want any of that credit, guys. Like I really don't know how else to express that to you. I've 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 said it before, but like that is God working through me because I'm not a good speaker. <laughs> I'm not a good speaker. Like, I can't, like, craft a powerful, like, sermon, you know, and, and these things yet. Maybe who knows where I'll be in 20 years or something. But so when I hear these things and when I hear, and they're encouraging things, um, and it, it helps me, definitely. But when I hear these things, like, I don't want any part of it in a way. And I don't know if that sounds bad or what, but I just, I really want, like, God to be glorified in, in me being up here, Okay. I want to be right by my calling in that and all these things. So, yeah, I don't know if that's, if you guys get it. (laughs) I hope that you do. But um, that's been something that's sort of really relevant this, again, this month, just because it's my preaching month. But every time that I'm, like, literally up here in front of you guys and, you know, expected to give you guys what you need. Um, And, yeah, just being in that place where, I want God to be glorified. That's, that's what we're called to do also in our service to God. So it's not specific to me. Um, like the world uses this phrase, like, oh, thank God, you know, so flippantly. But for me and for us, like, that's not a flippant thing. 
like in our service to him and everything that we do and say and act. Um, it's like praise God and here's why, you know, and how we articulate that. It's not a flippant thing. Anyways, I'm going to get off that tangent now, but um, I was thinking about that this morning. So let's move on. I appreciate the connection the writer of Hebrews makes here before, um, before our focus verse. And verses 11 and 12. So for those of you who aren't familiar, the writer, and I read it just now, but the writer was reminding the early Christian community to not become trapped or convinced um, into thinking that they need to perform more animal sacrifice. I mentioned at the beginning that because Christ, we don't need to do that anymore, right? We're perfectly clean. We don't need to be cleaned anymore. It's done. Um, he's saying, look, the whole method of animal sacrifice even to the point of disposing of the bodies outside the temple, was just a, pre- a precursor to Jesus. The bodies of the dead animals had to be disposed, and so they took them outside um, and to burn them in this sort of endless fire. And so you can imagine that in a system where you constantly have to be sac- killing and burning animals um, in order to be made right with God, there's this just literal like endless fire outside the city because they have to go somewhere. Um, But in the same way, he says, and he compares to Christ, Christ's body was disposed of, crucified outside the city gates. The whole thing was used by God as an illustration for the supreme sacrifice that he sent us in his son. And the early church was in danger of tarnishing their witness to that and how they they praised God for that um, every time they went back to the temple to do this, to just repeat this process of sacrifice, of animal sacrifice to God. And so he rightfully so felt the need to rebuke them. Um, How can they praise God and preach Christ when they're just going back and undermining everything that he did and sending his son to live and die? That's super confusing to people. Uh, You can't tell somebody what what they've been doing is the right way, but then tell them that they need a new way, but then say the the old way is still good. Like, that doesn't make any sense. If you tell somebody that yeah, if you tell somebody that the old way is good, but they need a new way, but you're still good in the old way. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't compute. Um, it's important that we don't fall into this trap ourselves, okay? And it's relevant for us today um, that how we preach Christ is, is held up, you know? That, it's, that we're not undermining all that in the way it is that we live. Back then, it was specific specific to different Levitical laws um, and living under the law itself, but, um, and what you ate and in circumcision and, you know, how you came before people and this and that, there's a, there's a lot. But today it's different a little bit. Um, it's misplaced affections maybe, or it's idolization. Like we have a culture of like celebrity and athlete worship, right? And there's whole like magazines devoted to that kind of thing. Maybe it's a desire to fit into culture, to the culture, like, like the Jews wanted to. Maybe it's a desire to be liked, or at least not disliked. <laughs> um, a reoccurring point, again, has just been about changing the way it is that we think um, and rethinking ourselves with the greater narrative that we have in Christ. I used a term last week, I think. I think it was last week, being countercultural. As Christians, we're called to be countercultural. But if we indulge these things that distract us, the old mindset, we aren't countercultural. We're just like um, counterproductive. We're counterproductive to the mission of Christ. Uh, we no longer stand beside him as partners. What was my verse in First Peter? Being partners, stand beside him in suffering. We no longer stand beside him as partners um, outside the city gates. Instead, we forsake or we abandon our our posts and just in terms of being a soldier like is that the kind of person that you guys want to be that that I want to be a person who abandons their post Um, is that how we want to be remembered when people remember us or when Christ himself when you're presenting remember I used the word or the word was used last week when you step up and present yourself before him uh, when he recounts the life of Jacob or Colin or Adam or 
Julia? You know, is that how, what will that look like? When you're standing before the Lord of Heaven's armies, what quality of sacrifice is he going to look at in you? In your life, were you the kind of soldier who stood firm and gave every bit of yourself, um, every word out of your mouth to point others to him? Do you continually offer up a sacrifice of praise and point people to him? Whatever captivates us now as the church um, and distracts us from Christ leads us into this same place that he's talking about in verse 11 and 12, the same place of confusion and missing the point and undermining everything that was already done. But instead, it says here, therefore, if we are willing to offer up a, sacri- a continual sacrifice of praise and a pledge of allegiance to God rather than um, to new or old, in their case, ideas, then we heed our calling. We heed our calling of standing side by side uh, with the one who pledged his allegiance to us to begin with. I think it's great that in, in service here, at the beginning of service, we have time set aside or a mechanism set aside to, to do that, to share how God is working in our lives in different ways and you know, blessing us with this or that. <clears throat> but I think that it will really be a test of our, where we are in our faith with where, as Aletheia, we're specifically heading, the direction we're heading in with the outreach and the upreach. Um, and we'll really get to flex this muscle of uh, outside the body and work on this part of our relationship to God and how we how we praise him and how we articulate that in our relationships or interactions with people. Um, you know, all with the hope, as I mentioned at the beginning of the month, with building up the body, um, putting ourselves out there and, yeah, showing how God is working in your life and being articulate in that instead of, you know, just hoping that someone gets it. You know what I mean? Like how, how you point to God and to Christ in everything that, and how he interacts in your life. Um, but it's important to remember that in that, um, like, it's not always going to be easy, I guess. Like, life for us, and scripture makes it clear, life for us isn't glamorous or it's not flashy, and Christ specifically says that we can expect to suffer. Um, you know, we're not trying to get a thousand friends on Facebook and when we go out in the world Christ says that we can expect to be rejected in a lot of ways but we, we play the long game remember, we play the long game he played the long game, we play the long game um, our life is sacrifice and it's sacrifice on a multifaceted level and I've tried to really come at it different ways this month and I hope you take something out of it but how we give back to him is sacrifice on many different levels and layers. But it's beautiful to him when we live in this way. Okay? And he's the person that it matters to the most. Um, it's beautiful for us individually, and it's beautiful to us as a body who helps hold us accountable to this standard of sacrifice and this attitude of sacrifice that was set before us. In, verses, in verse 16, the writer uses the word... Well, it says share for us, but he uses the word koinonia, which, which means fellowship and communion. So as we move on from this month and think about these things and think about these aspects of who we are, continue to analyze yourselves, continue to, to reflect on your testimony of sacrifice and your praise to God and, and how you can partner with Christ in this way. And the writer says share in this together fellowship and communion in this together. So, that's what I have for you guys this week. Some questions for you guys to discuss going into cell groups. How have you viewed giving back praise to God for his relationship, role, and movement in your life? Is it a chore to you, a mechanism, or are you eager to express your joy for how he works in your life? How are you being effective in this way? 
Does your praise bring others to a curiosity to start and a relationship with God and a knowledge of Christ? How would you honestly measure your quality of this sacrifice, this aspect of sacrifice? And lastly, how are you committed to sharing in this? Let's talk about these things. Colin Stogers in the comments. Console group doesn't have windows down there, so remember, time can fly. But have a good discussion nonetheless.